So what do we learn this week about enduring ideal in modern? And overall, our record wasn't bad. We played five matches. We won three of them. We were probably slightly aided by some of the matchups we ran into. Uh, the Gilderbaron Planeswalker deck was really sweet, but definitely not tier by any means. The Grixis Control List... I'm not really sure what was going on. Our opponent didn't do much of anything except cast the worst Liliana ever printed. So that kind of helped with the record. Uh, the other games were really close, even when we lost. And the biggest takeaway, if you do one thing with this deck, is we just don't have enough lands. That is by far the biggest issue. Many of the games that we lost, we had the win in hand, and we just couldn't get up enough mana to cast Enduring Ideal. It is very, very difficult to resolve an Enduring Ideal and lose. It's theoretically possible, but it doesn't happen that much in practice. So that's kind of the entire goal of the deck. On the other hand, it is very hard for us to win without resolving an Enduring Ideal. So the fact that we only have 22 lands means that we can't cast our game-winning card as consistently as we'd like to, so that is easily the biggest thing for the deck. I think I'm going to write an entire article at some point, or do an entire video that's titled, When you build a deck, after you think you're finished, cut your worst card and add one more land, because this is a reoccurring theme that comes up a lot with the decks we play uh, from Instant Deck Techs on Much Brew, other lists I get sent from people. There's this natural human tendency, or magic player tendency, to want to play sweet things. Lands aren't very cool. Lands don't really do anything. They're they're kind of this necessary evil. Yes, you need them because you got to cast your other stuff, but you don't like drawing lands most of the time. You want to draw sweet, powerful spells, so it's really easy to skimp on lands and kind of hope for the best. Cross your fingers, hope things work out. But that ends up costing you so many times and really ends up giving you so much more grief over the long run because you don't have the lands to cast your cool, powerful spells. So that is a general rule of thumb. Figure out what number of lands you think you need in your deck and then add one more. In this deck, it's especially bad because it's 61 cards and I don't really get the justification for having 61 cards. It's not like the mill thing is an issue, like you're trying to play through your entire deck because you got misfill planes. So if that was uh, the idea that some matches are just going to go until both players draw their entire deck because you lock your opponent out but you can't win, you can still do that with misfill planes. Just put things on the bottom of your library so you're going to win that anyway. So I don't really see any justification for playing 61 cards in the deck and I I did the numbers, I, I did some, uh, some distribution numbers on the lands, and guess how many draws it takes before you have a 50-50 shot of hitting seven lands, which is the number you need to resolve an enduring ideal. You probably won't believe this, but in this deck, 18, 18 is the 50-50 the shot of getting the necessary number of lands for enduring ideal. Of course, that is kind of deceptive because four of those lands are Nykthos, and that's kind of the hope of the deck is that you'll be able to play some enchantments, uh, Leyline of Sanctity especially is awesome for this because it's free, and then draw Nykthos, have Nykthos tap for five mana, seven mana, and use that to cast your Enduring Ideal, even if you don't have seven lands on the battlefield, but then you're relying very heavily on drawing Nykthos, you're hoping your opponent is on Blood Moon or Ghost Quarter or any of that kind of stuff, Fulminator Mage, because that really ruins your plans, and even the Nykthos plan we saw in some matches can be fragile, like uh, our opponent knows what's going on by the time we get to game two, maybe some opponents even in game one, so they just really focus on killing our white mana symbols to make sure we don't get to seven mana with our Nykthos, and that makes it really hard for us to win, so Add a land, add a land. This deck might actually need two lands. A 24 might be more reasonable. I get why it's trying to skimp, because there's not any card draw, and you can lose to just drawing the wrong part of your deck. Uh, so it's trying to make sure it's drawing action all the time, but I think it's just too little in this deck. I think you got to have 23, probably 24. As far as the rest of the deck, Leyline of Sanctity in the main deck is awesome. Ghostly Prison Sphere of Safety can win matchups all by themselves. Suppression Field is hit or miss, but we want white mana symbols. Kind of the same thing with our Rune Halos. The one card I didn't really like was Heloid Got a Sun. Eh, 
I don't think that's necessarily necessary. It's it's the least powerful of our finishers. I would probably just cut Heloid altogether, although it was hilarious when our opponent tried to Maelstrom Pulse it, not realizing, so you get some, some fringe benefits because people don't really know the cards that well. Uh, but that would be probably my main suggestion. Cut Heloid, add in a land, probably go down to three rune Halos, put one in the sideboard if you want to. Uh, otherwise, I think the list is solid and it felt very good. It just lost to itself more than I would like. And I think the the main reason for that was the land problem. There is some awkwardness. We had one match where we drew, just naturally drew, Dove Tape and Form of Dragon in both games. Another possibility, and I'm coming around on this, is the deck should probably have one more red source. Uh, play a Sacred Foundry, play another Temple. I don't really care what it is, but it's kind of painful to draw your Form of Dragon and know you can't cast it. Then you literally have to uh, resolve an Enduring Ideal, draw your cards for the turn. You can't cast them, so you keep building up cards in your hand. Eventually discard the Form of Dragon to hand size, then use a Misfill Planes to get it back, and then tutor it up. So it's kind of a free roll. There's no blood moons in this deck none of that stuff so why not throw in a couple more red sources maybe the full set of temples is the way to go because that scrying is really relevant in the deck because like i said no card advantage no filtering so it's essentially what you draw off the top and especially if we're going to go up some lands you still want to have that consistency of hitting a lot of spells and this deck can deal with tap lands it's not a curve out deck it's not aggressive at all so maybe the solution is go four temples that lets us cast the form of dragon also ups our land count but still gives us the chance of drawing all spells we need to because we can use temple to scry extra lands to the bottom if we do get in a scenario where we're flooding out so i think that's my main suggestion cut heloid cut a rune halo or move it to the sideboard go up to four temples and run the deck like that and i think you'll have some success with it anyway that's been our much brew about nothing for this week featuring enduring ideal in modern i hope you all have had a wonderful holiday season thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed the video as well and I will talk to you soon.